Hey guys, Matthew here. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the new crafting with the Eldritch Orbs and the Eldritch Influences. Uh, so that being the Eater of Worlds and the Syrian Exarch. Now, before I start the video, I want to say a few things. Uh, so it's going to be a bit of an intro. Now, initially, when I first went through PoEDB and I looked at the modifiers, I have to say I was kind of let down at how weak I figured they actually were. Right? I was expecting a new endgame crafting, new crazy stuff, but in reality, what I realized is that the goal of these new influences and stuff is kind of like a, a way to uh, give a nice helping hands to newer players or slower players and, and just be a stepping stone from the medium, you know, like the mid-game or early endgame into the real endgame. Now, I think that for 90% of builds, the old influences are still going to be your best in slots right? with the elevated modifiers and stuff, but that's where it gets really, really pricey. This gear is kind of like an in-between, which is going to allow you to get quite a bit of power on a lot of builds, both defensively and offensively, and also just make gearing that much easier uh, with very minimal cost. So I'm saying this because today's video is going to be very uh, beginner friendly. I'm not going to look at the system from a super uh, experienced point of view uh, and super advanced. I'm going to go from more like the people who are just getting into it. Uh, because there's a lot to talk about and it's not as intuitive as it might like might seem especially due to the uh the the importance of dominance when it comes to crafting the items now a lot of people look at these new influences and they kind of go like okay so i'm basically going to get an item which is already good right it's got my prefixes my suffixes whatever i'm going to buy it and then i'm going to re-roll the implicits over and over until i get what i want and that's what i'm seeing a lot of people are actually consider like thinking how this uh, this new stuff works and i'm gonna tell you guys that i think that you should work it backwards start with the implicits because that's the expensive stuff and then work on the actual affixes on your items because they're so generic because we're not using influence items here right they're so generic life resistances move speed uh you know attributes those are all things that on boots helmets gloves and body armors you can pretty much all target those via essences or fossils which is why i'm saying in my opinion i think that you really need to start with the implicits and that's how you're going to save a lot of currency and get a decent amount of player power so let's get right into the guide as always in the description down below you'll get the uh you'll find the link to this guide this is my casual exile guide highly recommend you make your own copy uh, this is where all my guides for this league are going to be and you can see it also as a basically the bible when it comes to making currency in this game and you know crafting is a way of making currency and i do think there is potential with the new eldritch stuff so okay now there's there's some super super beginner friendly stuff explanation of how this works but we're going to go through that very quickly now a lot of people have been asking me where to find the modifiers so essentially we're going to head over to poedb and we are going to go around the middle of the page where it says siege of the atlas and then mods and you can see helmets gloves body armor whatever and it says searing and then eater so searing being searing exarch and then eater being eater of worlds uh, so this is where you'll find the actual modifiers. So for example, we could look at boots from Eater of Worlds and then we'll get all of the Eater of Worlds modifiers. And if we were interested in Searing Exarch, we could just click this button here and it would show us the uh, implicit for Searing Exarch on boots. Um, so very simple stuff. I wrote a bit of a guide on people who are trying to farm these currency orbs. Maybe they're solo cell found, stuff like that. Uh, so essentially it all comes to adding the new influences to your map device and then getting as many altars and packs uh, of these new... Um, influence monsters in your map and it all comes down to pack size so you can read through that you know uh but there's not much uh, going on there now let's talk about the actual modifiers themselves the implicit and how it all works so essentially you have new implicits which all have between uh one and, and six tiers right they have or sorry they all have six tiers and the lowest ones basically are going to re-roll via the lesser currency which is the cheapest one and then the greater grand exceptional and exceptional is the highest tier which you can possibly drop on the ground i believe and also, uh, the highest that you can roll via the natural currencies, after that you have to gamble. So if you're going for T1 or T2, you're going to need to use the Orb of Conflict. Now for those who aren't aware, the Orb of Conflict is basically like a Maven's Orb. Um, so it's going to give a plus one tier to an affix, and then, or to an implicit, and then a minus one to another. Uh, so unlike the Maven Orb, it doesn't outright delete the other modifier, but it does lower it by tier. However, if let's say I was to use an Orb of Conflict on this helmet, which has T6 punishment and mana regen, both the lowest, one of them is going to become T5, the other one is going to disappear because it can't go down to T7. If, however, for example, I had a T5 and a T5, when I use the Orb of Conflict, one of them would go to T4 and the other would go to T6. So it keeps the balance in terms of tiers. 
Uh, so this is how you actually go about crafting super endgame stuff. But again, today's guide is going to be looking at mostly beginner stuff. So we're not going to worry too much about the higher end uh, of the tiers. We're going to focus on the beginner stuff. All right, so let's talk about how to actually craft it. So the first thing you want to figure out is which modifiers you actually want. So you look at PoEDB, look at the list, look at the ones that actually affect your character, and then figure out if there's anything that you know seems pretty good for you. Uh, for example, attack builds could be you know the strike gloves or the intimidate gloves or you know attack speed for something more generic. Uh, you could also go spell suppression, which would alleviate some spell suppression on your gear, make it a little bit easier, maybe on your tree, right? There's there's some pretty cool modifiers. A lot of them, you know, they're pretty powerful, but they're not again the most end game stuff out there. But the first thing you'll want to do is figure out what's the odds of getting the modifier that you want and how much is it going to cost you so for example if we look at gloves we're going to head over to uh, craft of exile and then we can do a quick um you search for gloves dexterity for example and then we can do a quick control uh control um f and then we can type in attack speed and it's going to highlight you know that it's a searing exarch mod so we don't have to figure that out either and we can see that it has an implicit weight of 3.4 percent so that means it would take on average around 30 eldritch uh you know uh, lesser eldritch currencies in order to get the the lowest tier of attack speed now for the most part depending on the item if you have a really good pair of gloves it might be cheaper to use that 30 chaos to roll these uh to roll these eldritch currencies right instead of doing it the opposite way around and buying the implicit already on there in some cases buying the implicit is going to be significantly cheaper however because you don't have to buy the implicit as tier one right you can buy the more expensive version so for example we could look at the exact thing that we just looked at uh attack speed and i wrote a bit of a guide on how to basically like what it looks like when you're looking for the implicit um but here's a pair of gloves for example right this is the highest possible natural tier which is tier uh three right so anything higher than this on the attack speed would require you to order of conflict uh, so this is as good as it gets you know for the early game if you want to call it that now in order to reroll this attack speed here, you will need an exceptional uh, amber instead of the lesser ones because this is the tier three, and this is twenty-five chaos each. Now we do remember that it, we said it was somewhere around thirty required, which would mean that if you were to try to reroll this attack speed yourself on your own pair of gloves, it would cost you somewhere around seven hundred and fifty chaos on average to roll the eleven percent attack speed modifier. Meanwhile, you can buy it for fifteen C, which is ninety-eight percent cheaper. Now, this is basically what I'm telling you guys to do. Go out and buy the items which have the really good implicits that you care about, and then I'll teach you guys in this video how to craft these items for very, very cheap, utilizing the dominating um, influence. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is essentially, you know, try to figure out which implicits we care about. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to make sure that the modifier that we get is gonna be dominating the modifier that we don't care about. And hopefully that modifier is a prefix. Now, most of the modifiers that people actually care about seem to be the Searing Exarch. And this is good because this is going to allow us to focus on exclusively prefix and isolate prefixes later on in the crafting session or the, the crafting process. Uh, which means that in most cases, almost every single case, we will want to try to start off with dominating Searing Exarch influence unless your build really needs something niche. Uh, but the vast majority of builds, Searing Exarch is the play. It has things like Intimidate, Unnerved, which are, you know, the best for attack builds and, and spellcasters, pretty much. It has things like um, uh, Strike Gloves are also uh, Searing Exarch, so there's a lot of good stuff there. But anyways, what we're going to do, and why this is important, is because of the dominating uh, system. So the dominating and why it matters is because of the new uh, Eldritch Chaos Exalted and Annulment Orbs, because they allow you to basically pick and choose if you want to focus on prefixes or suffixes and isolate them one at a time now let me just turn this off i apologize for that so the eldritch chaos orb if the searing exarch is dominant will reroll only prefixes now this is good because when it comes to boots gloves helmets and body armors prefixes are very straightforward most of the time you're just looking for life and maybe a bench craft for example on a body armor you could be looking for flat life and then crafted percent life on a pair of gloves, you could be looking for life and crafted, I don't know, damage during any flask effect, something like that, right? Some very, very generic modifiers. And if you want to go even cheaper than that, you could just bench craft a life and forget about any other prefixes anyways, right? For anything but body armors, this is pretty much going to be the way to go anyways. 
it's really just the body armors that we kind of want to have the natural life so that we can craft whatever we want. Um, but Eldritch Exalted Orbs are basically going to do exactly that. Just add a modifier to uh, whatever is dominant and Annulment's going to you know, remove a modifier. And then the Eldritch Chaos Orbs, I like to look at them as basically harvest uh, modifiers of our Reforge Keeping Prefixes or Reforge Keeping Suffixes, which are very expensive. And these are extremely cheap, right? We're talking about about 15 C each or so for these Eldritch Chaos Orbs. And they, they don't require you to go and do some third-party trading or anything like that. They don't require you to have to trust someone else with your item, have to find someone who has the craft, find someone who has the vouches, or find the craft yourself. It's literally just a few chaos, and you can do it all by yourself. Okay, so now that we've done all this theory, let's go ahead and jump into an actual example. And then at the end of the video, I'll do one in-game just to kind of simulate what it might look like. All right. So putting all together step by step. So what I'm going to do here and the example that I decided to go off is a pair of gloves with Intimidate and Spell Suppression. Now this is actually a pretty weak example because Intimidate doesn't matter for the tier and it is Searing Exarch, which means that uh, getting it dominating is actually kind of useless. However, it is a very rare modifier as you're about to see. It has a weighting of 1.3%. Uh, so even at one chaos each, that would be about, you know, 80 C or so, 80, 75, 80 C, whatever, in order to get this modifier by itself. Meanwhile, you can buy a base, just like I did here, for five chaos. And this is also a grand, right? So it's a lot better than the regular 15%. Um, so you'd be saving even more currency there. Not that it matters again, because uh, Intimidate is one of those modifiers that even the lowest of the lowest is more than enough, because your uptime is going to be 100% on pretty much any attack builds, Unless you're playing something like, I guess, slams or something, they're very slow. Uh, but for the vast majority, the, the actual implicit tier will not matter. But it's the example that I went with because that's what I was going to craft for myself. Um, so we look again at Intimidate and it has a weighting of 1.3%. So that's pretty bad. Meanwhile, Spell Suppression has a weighting of 3.5, which means we're going to be looking at about 30 orbs, 1 Chaos each, 30 C to get some additional suppression. So we have basically got two choices. We can either decide to focus on the implicits or focus on the suffixes for our item uh, in this case. Now, you could reverse this and make it so that you're focusing on your uh, prefixes instead. If you had the uh, the Eater of Worlds influence as dominant, but I feel like most items you're going to want the uh, dominating to be the Searing Exarch, which is why I'm going with this uh, for, for this example. So the best case scenario is that you find a pair of gloves which has the two implicits that you actually care for, so in this case, Intimidate and Suppress, where the Intimidate or the Searing Exarch modifier is actually dominating the Suppress, right? This is T5, this is T6. Uh, so this is technically perfect. We would be able to just go off ex uh, straight from the bat with this, and it's 18 Chaos. Meanwhile, rolling this alone would cost us well over 150 Chaos because of this tier 2, which means we're not using 1C per orb, we're using like 4 to 5C. Uh, so much much cheaper there and it already has suppress which means we don't have to worry about you know spending the currency either um or you could also kind of gamble with it so the advantage of going with a gamble strategy is that you get to have the gloves pre-crafted right so for example you can see that for 15 chaos here i'm able to get a pair of gloves which says triple t2 suffixes dexterity attack speed and cold res very solid suffixes and it has my uh, my Intimidate and my uh, some Chaos Leash's Life. Now, technically, these gloves are already done, right? It has uh, Life crafted on them. But let's just say that it didn't have Life crafted on them. Therefore, we would have to fix that issue. Um, what we would have to do is use an Orb of Conflict. Now, Orb of Conflict will remove one of these and elevate the other. So we have a 50% chance of bricking it. However, Orb of Conflicts are pretty cheap. This pair of gloves is pretty cheap. If we fail, we throw it out, you know, and we're just like, okay, whatever, not a big deal. Still only a handful of chaos that we lost, 30 chaos or whatever. Uh, if we elevate Intimidate, however, now compared to this part, we actually have our suffixes done. So we don't have to spend any additional currency when it comes to crafting the suffixes. Meanwhile, this is going to require us to craft the suffixes. It's going to be pretty similar in terms of price. And then the last option is that you buy a pair of gloves that has only the modifier that you care about, in, in, in our case, Intimidate. Uh, because if it doesn't have an Eater of World Implicit, it only has a Searing Exarch, it would actually be dominating by default. It needs to have both influence in order to, for this dominating to uh, actually take effect. Uh, so the Searing Exarch is just automatically dominating here since Eater of Worlds is not on the item, which will, again, allow us to not have to worry about suffixes. We can focus solely on prefixes. So for 70 Chaos, which is a little bit more expensive, you can get triple T2... Uh, 
resistances on your gloves with 25% Intimidate. This is a pair of gloves that in any other league would have cost you significantly more. Now again, Intimidate is not a modifier which cares for the implicit, and on gloves, a lot of the time, the only prefix you'll really care about is Crafted Life, so I definitely use one of the weaker examples. Something like a Body Armor, where you want to have Life and Percent Life would have been a much better example, uh, but it doesn't matter. Technically, the actual uh, methodology applies the same. So in our best case scenario, which is the one where we already have the Dominating in, uh, Intimidate and the Spell Suppression, we essentially just have to craft the gloves. I'll showcase that, how I would do that in the game. And in the other cases where the suffixes are basically already done, uh, we can just go straight to the last, uh, last step, which is going to be working on our prefixes. So now that we've got the theory out of the way, let's go ahead and showcase what that might look like. So what I have here is a pair of gloves, which has the Intimidate. Uh, I bought this for 5 chaos, right? And it's a 25%. It's a grand. This is probably saving me like three, four, 500 chaos that I don't need to spend because this Intimidate is already a grand. Now, again, Intimidate tier does not matter, but in some cases, this is going to be a big deal and a lot of currency saved, multiple hundred chaos. So now, because this is um, dominating, I get to focus solely on my prefixes at a time. So all I need to do is finish off the suffixes. So the easiest way to go about that is either essences or fossils for 90% of your crafts because we're looking for just generic stuff, right? It does have influence, so we're not going for anything special. Life, resistance, you know, attack speed, accuracy, uh, attributes, depending if you're playing, for example, an omnis um, omniscience build. It really kind of matters on what you're going to be looking for. But for my example here, I've got some Shrieking Essences of Sorrow. Now, these essences are one chaos each. You can buy 20 of them at a time, 15 of them at a time for one chaos. And the odds of getting something decent, like a T2 resistance alongside uh, the, you know, the mandatory dexterity is very high. So I might have to spend like 20 chaos worth of essences and I'm going to have some pretty solid suffixes. So let's see what I can do here. Let's just say that I'm looking for either some decent resistance or, I don't know, maybe I'm looking for uh, like some decent attributes instead. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and slap this on. Now you can see that uh, I basically got uh, no no other suffixes, so we would go again. Now this is going to reroll my gloves. So in this case, I got double resistance. However, they're pretty weak, uh, so we can go again. Okay, so here we've got some T3 lightning and some T5 uh, fire. Now this is not amazing. But as you can see, we also got hybrid life. So I could go ahead and craft on some life. And the end, you know, the end result here would be a pair of gloves where I have my intimidate, uh, the required dexterity for whatever reason. I would also have about a hundred life on my gloves, or 90 life or so, and a total of 60 resistances uh for somewhere in the ballpark about 10 chaos spend for a pair of gloves, which is gonna last me for all the way up until end game when I get some true, very, very good gloves. Now I got pretty lucky here, right? Because I got an open prefix so I could craft my life. And remember what I said earlier, uh, where for example, a body armor, you'll want both life, which is flat and percent and percent can only really be crafted. So we're going to have to go a step further. So let's just say that, uh, you know, we, we roll another pair like this. Now let's just imagine that, uh, these gloves had two other suffixes which were gg like i don't know t2 spell suppress because it can't roll t1 it's too low level and uh t1 chaos resistance because that can roll at item level 83 right so i've got a really really good pair of gloves i'm super happy about my suffixes but now i gotta work out my prefixes so here's the thing if i was to use an eldritch chaos orb right now my pair of gloves has three prefixes so the only thing that it's going to do is it's going to reroll these three prefixes but it will never remove or add another prefix. And I think this is something that a lot of people uh, don't realize. When the Eldritch Chaos said, uh, the Eldritch Chaos says reroll prefix modifiers, it doesn't actually reforge the item. It only rerolls the actual modifiers on the item itself. Um, and in this case, because it's dominant for the Searing Exarch, it is exclusively working on our prefixes. So what that means is that, Let's just say again that this was a body armor where we want both flat life and percent life. We definitely need to have an open prefix for percent life. Uh, so even if I use a million of these Eldritch Chaos Orb, it's never going to open up a prefix. Not only that, I've got three suffixes that I really, really want. Again, we're just imagining that it has three perfect suffixes. So I really need to uh, annul this. But 
I can actually just simply use the actual uh, Eldritch Annulment because this is going to guarantee that it's going to hit a prefix, meaning my suffixes are going to be safe. Now, in this case, for example, we lost uh, whatever that was, right? So now we opened up one of the prefixes. So now we can use the Eldritch Chaos until we get flat life. And if it was a body armor, here we got T3 life, which would be around 100 flat life. And I could just simply craft on percent life and I would have a body armor with you know, imagining that we had T1 Chaos Resistance and T1 Spell Suppression, we also would get, um, you know, Dexterity, Flat Life, and then Percent Life, and the total cost would be somewhere around, I don't know, like 30, 40 Chaos, and this pair of gloves, which, again, would be a body armor in, in, uh, in our mind, would be just about as good as a body armor in a previous league, which would have potentially cost you, you know, 5 to 10 Exalts but it didn't even cost a fraction of a single exalt. Uh, so in my opinion, this is the way to go when it comes to the Eldritch Currency uh, and, and the influence and in crafting. I do think that starting with your actual implicits is a much better option than starting with the actual modifiers because of the price of the higher tier on the, uh, on the implicits. But of course, if your build needs something which the tier doesn't matter, which means you get to just spam lessers, it might just be cheaper to use lesser currencies, like for example, Intimidate, right? Uh, I could just spam, you know, 80 chaos worth of lessers. Now that would still be significantly more than what it cost me to get this pair of gloves to where it is at this point. Uh, but, you know, maybe if I had some really, really good pair of gloves, like three insane suffixes and three really good prefixes, it would be worthwhile. But in the majority of cases, starting with your prefixes and then doing the essence slam and then doing the um, the Eldritch Chaos and then finish it off with a Benchcraft is going to save you a ton of currency and it's also going to uh, allow you to make some pretty damn good pieces of gear which are gonna, you know, hold you up until the very, very end game. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, this guide. Before I go, as always, I do want to say a massive thank you to my supporters. So Jacob, Alex, Max, Hamad, Raskol, Brandon, welcome back, Thomas, Nake, The Great Master, Alex, The Other, Alex, Tim, Mercury, Johnny, Gary, Fish, Nailed, The Arsonist, and Bizzen, as well as, of course, anybody else who has supported me in the past. Anybody else who resists to remain anonymous, I know there's a lot of you guys missing on this list. I'm going to be updating it shortly. Uh, so huge thank you for the uh, the recent support. And again, I'm going to have a much more advanced guide on how to use, for example, fractured items and you know temple modifiers and imprint spamming uh, coming up shortly uh, for the people who want to take it to the next level. If, for example, your build use, utilizes one of these uh, modifiers as you know their true endgame. So again, hopefully you guys enjoyed the guide and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.